Libra 12, Miners Emerging from a Mine. We're discussing here the need to delve deep. The miners go deep into the earth to find what they're looking for. And this metaphor indicates that we as seekers, spiritual seekers, need to delve deep. We need to work hard and go deep down into the unconscious realms, the hidden realms of our being, to actually deal with some dirty stuff, some grimy, black, horrible stuff that's within us. And because um, each of us has got this process to go through to, to clear the, 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 the grubbiness of our psychological imbalances. So the metaphor of a miner mining for coal is just like a spiritual seeker delving into the mysteries to, to find the gold of true knowledge and self-understanding, the truth of who we really are. A lot of our grubby bits are hidden away. We're all a little bit greedy or a little bit lustful or a little bit envious or lazy. We're all subject to the seven deadly sins, all of us. And it is the case with the typical spiritual seeker that they try not to show that part. Most people hide it to some extent, but in a, a candid moment will admit that they do have these problems, and you, typically they'll laugh about them. And uh, just anecdotally here, um, when you see somebody laughing, be aware that something's wrong. Laughter is almost, almost never okay. Usually it's covering up something which they're embarrassed about or ashamed of. Now, the spiritual seeker, the, the casual or easygoing spiritual seeker, tends to behave as though they had already overcome all of their shadowy stuff. So you'll find them behaving as though they were humble. And, and they're quite proud of the fact that they're humble. And, and you see them behaving kindly to somebody who really doesn't deserve their kindness, and, and so on. And they behave in the way that's been written down somewhere. Yeah, let's say the Bible or, or some modern version of, of teaching us how to behave properly. Uh, love thy neighbor. Well, I don't. I don't love my neighbor. I like him very much. I respect him, absolutely. But that's, that's, that's not love. That's like and respect. And I don't want to love everyone. That's not okay for me. I want to love special people. I want to respect everyone and be fair. I want to escape from judgmentalism. I want to do that. But I don't want to love my neighbor. And um, <clears throat> these teachings that have been subtly corrupted were, were once valid, I'm sure they were, but um, they were corrupted over the centuries, and, and they've been misunderstood by people that just actually haven't got the consciousness to interpret them properly. And this includes teachers who really teach in order to learn. And we're all of us like that. All teachers are trying to learn a little bit more. But the student who believes that the teacher knows everything is just foolish. It's just never true. It cannot be true. It's the student's job to work it out and the teacher's job to bring them to the point where they can work it out, but not to give them the answers. The mysteries are mysterious. They are veiled and they're veiled for a very good reason. And the reason for the miner, for example, going down into the earth is not only to get the coal, it is also to develop the grit of personality, the strength of character, that they can put up with the hardship involved in winning that coal. It's the same with the spiritual seeker. The spiritual seeker, actually a sincere one, a serious one that really wants to get to the end, the end being realization. Any serious spiritual seeker wants hardship. They, they need to be put through a hard time. 
and that can be just ordinary life circumstances. And you will find that if you face life with integrity and you work on the basis of your principles, you always make a principal decision, you will find that brings you into hardship and difficulty. And the thing to do is to acknowledge that there is that aspect of the spiritual training. And without that aspect, then you end up as, a, as one of the pink and fluffies. You just like to think that you're spiritual and, and behave as though you're spiritual and carry on denying the fact that you've got these seven deadly sins inside of you. And that denial, that'll get you. That'll finish you off. The denial. We have to be honest about our failures and failings. The secret that's to be won through hardship is that in this very, very gritty situation where strength of character is necessary, the, the freedom that we gain from these straightened circumstances is the freedom of mind. The mind registers whether or not it is free. It is only the mind that can do that. What else could it be? So the mind needs to train itself in very, very difficult circumstances such that it can always affirm optimism and accept that in the darkness the light must shine and in the greater darkness a greater light must be brought forward. This is very poignant in today's period of world history. We do see, surely, if we look at the news in the last few years, this is, let's say, since the turn of the millennium, it's getting darker. The world is a darker place than it was when I was a kid. What do we do about that? You know, you can groan about that if you like. That won't help. Or you can celebrate it, because within that greater darkness, the greater light will now shine. And you just have to make the choice to be giving your attention to the things of light, especially within your own heart. Notice that you're coping. You know, for all these fear-mongering energies around us, COVID will kill us all, there's a, a war coming, there's pollution, there's climate change, all of these grim predictions, actually, yeah, you're, you're okay. You're doing all right. Notice that, that some part of you is optimistic, is powerful enough to send the darkness into the shadows where it belongs. Because your light is so strong, the darkness just can't get you. And this is the mystery of real spiritual seeking. When we actually put ourselves through the mill, really have a hard time, we develop the strength of character necessary constantly to affirm optimism, come what may. And we want that, we choose that, because we're serious in our task. However, it's not okay to live life as though it were a grim experience, totally. It isn't. It isn't a grim experience totally. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And if you've actually created for yourself constant challenge, constant hardship, if you never manage to get on top of things, you can't pay the bills, you never find a decent relationship, the kids don't respect you, you don't enjoy your job, you don't enjoy your hobbies, you don't enjoy anything, well, that's wrong. That's a mistake. You've made a mistake. You have to change that, because life isn't grim. Life includes grimness, but life is whatever you choose it to be. And if your choice is perpetual hardship, then there's something wrong in your mind. Your mind has been trained, bullied even, into pessimism by forces, parental forces, government forces, peer group challenges, employers, everybody who's on a different track to your track, they've actually tried to persuade you to join them in their fear-based analysis of the world. And you've foolishly joined them. That's wrong. Change. If, if you're not actually enjoying life, if, if life isn't a joy, at least sometimes, but let's say usually, 
then there's a mistake to correct. You've made a bad decision. It needs to be undone. You're with the wrong employer. You're in the, with the wrong partner. You're living in the wrong house. You're in the wrong city. You shouldn't be in a city. You should be in the country or, or whatever it is that's wrong for you. First, identify it. Be honest that it's not okay. Your life isn't working. And then set about changing it with the optimistic expectation that you're going to be able to improve it. So the strength of character necessary to do that has been won by your having survived the hardship. That's the purpose of the hardship, to develop the strength of character. In no means, by no means, is this a punishment. This is not your karmic debt being paid off. The understanding of karma is, is half right, half wrong. We, we, we don't come into this world with a debt to pay off. That's nonsense. We come into this world imperfect, with the agenda of reducing that imperfection. And that's what karma is. It's the process of reducing our imperfections. So if you find yourself constantly to be as though paying off a debt that you don't feel that you incurred in this lifetime, then you've been persuaded by wrong thinking people about the nature of life. Life isn't hard. Life isn't harsh. Neither is it joyful. It's life. It's neutral. What gives it a spin, what makes it harsh or joyful, is, is your own mind. So be optimistic, be of good faith, practice that, expect good fortune, and be determined to find happiness. Then it will come. It will not come by itself. You will attract it. But it will come if you attract it.